Now then, here's an exercise in perception. But before we do that, here's a bit of a taster. We have a vintage 9 inch Makita angle grinder, circa 1982. So we're going to have a go at that fairly soon. It makes a horrible noise. So uh, we need to dig into it and find out. But for today, we've got this. It's a cheap work light. I'm assuming it's got um, lithium cells in it, 18650s. It's 10 watts. Uh, I'll show you the symptoms, but basically you switch it on and nothing happens. And it's got two, st it's got a high and a low value, one and two, but absolutely nothing happens when you switch it on. Question is, is it the LED? Is it the batteries? Is it wiring? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? So let's just crack on and have a go. And the first thing I think I'll do is I will plug a charger in. And I think this charger is 8 volts. That's, and I've got this because I've got one similar to this, but instead of 10 watts, it's 20 watts. So we'll try this uh, charger. It's uh, DC 8.4 volts, 500 milliamps. So let's bring you in and let's see what happens. As you can see here, there's a rocker switch. Nought is in the middle. That's one, that's two. Okay, there's the import jack and here's the charger. Let's plug it in first. Now that's interesting. I don't know whether you can see that but the little LED has lit up. So that tells me that the batteries have got some power in them. And I'm just going to plug it in and that LED gets brighter. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. But without it on, the LED is still lit. I don't know whether you can see that, hopefully you can. That tells me something's alive in there. So worst case scenario, we've got some batteries. And hopefully they're 18650s. So we can split this down. Previously, at other times, what I've done, I've had some of these and the batteries have been duff and I've actually taken the head and fed it with a phone charger of about 5 volts direct and they make a really quite nice little mains spotlight on the workshop area. Not too bright, just on the bench somewhere or something. I think I've got one I'll show you. Let me show you. Well it's run off just one of those little power supplies up there. There we go. I won't go and face into the light again but you can see where it is. So yeah worst case scenario either you get some lithium ion batteries or you get a a light that you can power off something else. A little LED down light. Okay, coming back to this. First of all, let's get rid of this foot. Just so it's not in the way. Come on. This thread's about four miles long. There we go. Now, we've got four screws. 
holding this back on. Just got to be a little bit careful because we've got some, um, I'm assuming, lithium cells in here and they've got power in them. So we just don't want to uh, create a permanent short across them because they might get a bit warm. Not might, they will. Okay. Right, let's just see. Here we go. So we've got two reds wires that go to the LED. Okay, so that's obviously the two stages. And that is 5 watts at 1.5 ohms and that's one at 0.5 ohms so there you go right we need to find out where we've got some DC voltage so I'll have the meter on 20 can we see yes we can so we got a negative there and we've got a positive there and we've got what have we got eight point seven volts can you see that hopefully you can I've got the polarity the wrong way around so we've got and if you look in the back you can see two lithium cells so we've got DC at that point there and there okay and we've got the switch I wonder if those um, those uh, resistors are duff let's try it on continuity and you see you can that's all right that's all right so why haven't we got we've got DC and got the the live the positive coming from there from the batteries down to here and we've got the negative coming from the batteries down to there and down to the LED what's going on so we need a positive DC from there over to there and there doesn't seem to be one I'm looking at that switch there and there doesn't seem to be a wire on it right and the red one goes from there to there and that white one goes round to the back of the battery don't know let's see what happens with that white wire shall we so there Aha! Well, as you can see, the white wire is floating loose, but it's tucked right down there. I wonder if this ever did work. It's a bit peculiar, isn't it, for it to be tucked down there like that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put the screwdriver under there and I'm going to switch that 
switch onto one side right let me get the soldering iron out and I'll get back to you in a moment okay let's tin the end of this wire I think we need to put some solder on don't want to go melting that wire got some solder on there now because it didn't appear that there was any There we go, and I left it switched on, and there we go. So let's just put this back together, switch it off first. So just be careful with those. Resistors. There we go. Amazing, isn't it? stuff that gets thrown away because nobody can be bothered or knows which end of a screwdriver to use or doesn't even possess a screwdriver and even if they took it apart they wouldn't be able to work out what's going on that's probably a bit cynical of me but we've got the evidence here low high and it was even charged up isn't that amazing right so this is a very short video because it was a very easy fix but it's only fixable if you want to and you just get in there and have a look I could have quite easily gone oh this is one of those cheap uh, work lights. They always pack up. They they um, they overdrive the LEDs to get too much uh, light out of them, and they burn out. And you could just go, that's it, throw it away. Can't be bothered. But brilliant. I mean, in some ways, it's great. It's another it's another work light. But in other ways, if it wasn't, if it was part of it that wasn't working, I would be able to use it again in the workshop. So there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, lots of comments, great bits of conversation. I love it. I've got, as I said, I've got the uh, Makita angle grinder video to do at some point because I've got to repair it first. Got to find out what's wrong with it. But because it is. 38 years old and my neighbor who passed it on to me said he's never had any bother with it apart from he had to change the cable so it's got the original brushes in it etc etc and it's done a lot of work so we can see we can have a look see what's packed up I mean it still works but it screams so I'm assuming a bearing but unlike those Dewalt uh, grinders that packed up after a year or two. This has got 38 years, so it'll be interesting to see what the quality's like. Anyway, we'll leave it at that. I'll hopefully I'll catch up you with you soon. Cheers for now.